and welcome to the video. In today's video, it's going to be a little different. We're going to touch on a piece of technology or really a segment of technology that's really starting to grow in popularity and that's augmented reality and virtual reality. Specifically for this video, we're going to talk about the Xreal Air augmented reality glasses. We're going to take a look at what paying one-tenth of the price of Apple's Vision Pro will get you when it comes to an augmented reality experience. Let's do this. Now, virtual reality and augmented reality are both pretty cool concepts, but they're also two uniquely different things. So with virtual reality, it's all about being immersed in an experience of some kind. Think about being at like a sporting event or being right in the center of one of your favorite video games on the PlayStation 5. With augmented reality, it's all about taking the current reality that's in front of you and overlaying something on top of it. And we've actually seen a really good example of augmented reality before in the past. Do you remember the Google Glass? Arguably, in my opinion, a product that was really ahead of its time, but that was a really solid example of what augmented reality could look like. Now, in the case of the Xreal Air AR glasses, they're trying to offer you a pretty decent augmented reality experience in the form factor of some sunglasses that will only cost you $379. And for $379, they actually come with a decent amount of stuff inside the box. So for glasses wearers, they will come with a prescription lens frame, which is cool to see. There's going to be three sizes of adjustable nose pads, small, medium, and large. They're going to come inside of a nice padded carrying case. And inside that carrying case is also going to be a USB-C to USB-C cable. And my favorite thing that comes inside the box is this matte cover for the front of the glasses. And we'll come back to that here in a second. Now, as far as the glasses themselves go, like I said, they look like black plastic sunglasses. If you're not paying attention, you probably couldn't tell what these are actually used for. And the build quality itself is predominantly plastic. So on the back of one of the temples, you're going to find the plug-in for the USB-C cable. And I mention that because there's no battery with this with these glasses. They're going to be strictly powered by whatever cable source they're plugged into. Now, the back of the temples also have two speakers and a set of buttons, one to adjust your brightness level and another to pause the input source. And the temples themselves are also adjustable from a vertical perspective. They low-key kind of sound like you're about to break them as you adjust them. It's kind of sus. And as far as the front of the glasses go, you're looking at a two-piece system with an ambient light sensor that can detect whenever you take the glasses on and off. And as far as the two-piece system goes, you have one lens that's going to obviously do your AR experience for you. And you have another that allows light to filter in so you still have access to some peripheral vision and you can kind of see what you're doing. Now, coming back to this visor, I would highly recommend using this whenever you are wearing the glasses mainly because I found as I was using the glasses in environments that had a lot of bright light coming in, it can almost drown out the AR experience that's in front of you. And this is going to help with keeping the content that's in front of you much more clear and not be affected by bright light. It's not going to fully black out your vision. You're still going to have peripheral, especially on the bottom and on the edges of the glasses. Uh, but I definitely think that this enhances the overall experience. There are four main functions that you can do with these glasses. Air casting, virtual desktop, AR space, and spatial display. Now with air casting, think of it as AirPlay if you own an Apple device. It's essentially just going to mirror whatever device is plugged into it right in front of you in an augmented reality space. So whenever I tested this with my Galaxy S23 Ultra, essentially whatever I had on my screen was just displayed right in front of me. It's, I mean, it's cool to see but it's not anything super exceptional to talk about. Now you can aircast other devices, but unfortunately you will have to purchase adapters like let's say HDMI if you wanted to aircast your favorite console or a lightning adapter if you wanted to aircast the contents on your iPhone screen. Now with virtual desktop, we already have a little bit of an idea of how this would look thanks to Apple's Vision Pro. You're essentially going to be able to project multiple screens in front of you as if they were monitors. And this is probably going to be your most useful feature. I can see it being really helpful. Let's say you're traveling, you only have a laptop and you need a couple of extra monitors in a pinch, or maybe you're working in a small area and you just don't have that much room physically for you know two to three extra monitors. And as far as the software for this goes, at the time of making this video, it's currently available in beta and it's only working for Apple Silicon Macs. 
and the feature set is a little limited. So you can project anywhere from one to three extra screens and you can do things like adjust the size, adjust the distance, and adjust the tilting angle of the two extra monitors should you use them. But one caveat with this, right? While you can make the monitors or the screen sizes really massive, it doesn't adjust to your field of view. So if you make them too big, you're gonna find yourself tilting your head up and down in order to see all of the contents of your screen. But either way, even in beta, it's kinda cool. The AR space. So this is going to be where you're probably going to spend the most of your time, and I think it's easily going to be the most entertaining aspect of the Air AR glasses. Now, it's going to work by launching the Nebula app on a Android device. And whenever I say Android device, I'm basically only talking about the heavy hitting flagships from Samsung and OnePlus. There's also phones from LG and Sony on the list of compatible devices, but I mean, it, how often do you see one of those phones out in the wild, right? Now the AR space is going to be your personal portal that has augmented reality experiences developed straight from Xreal. And it's, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. So you're going to, you're going to go in, there's going to be native applications, things like web browsing, YouTube. Uh, there's like a few games on there that you can try to play. I even noticed that there's a dedicated photos application that allows you to access the photos on your phone and project them out in front of you and kind of look at them in an AR space. That's pretty cool. There's even this like native cycling application. So there's like, there's a small amount of things going on. A couple of things I wanted to touch on though, my first day using the glasses, I think after like 30 minutes of using AR space, I got, I definitely got a little bit of a headache. I feel like that was probably just me getting adjusted to the overall experience because as I use them more, the, the headaches were, were not there anymore. And another thing I wanted to mention, the AR space, it's cool in the parts of it that work, but there's definitely room for improvement here. I think certain aspects of like the web browsing experience can definitely be improved. And as far as the app selection goes, it feels pretty limited so far. So hopefully, as this gains more popularity, they can develop more applications to create more of a reason to use this space for longer amounts of time. But pretty cool overall. Spatial display. Now this is a feature that will unfortunately require the purchase of another adapter, but it basically promises some pretty decent improvements whenever it comes to things like head tracking and what they're calling like overall smoothening as you're essentially using, you know, your air casting features on this device. It's important to know though that the core unit itself doesn't necessarily need the adapter in order for spatial display to actually work. So it's more so something that you would spend money on to improve the experience. It's not something that is necessary for the overall experience. But I think that just about does it for the Xreal Air augmented reality glasses. These are interesting. Like I could see these appealing to someone who definitely wants to jump into the world of augmented reality in a product that comes in a relatively cool form factor, I must say. And um, you might not necessarily want to spend Apple Vision Pro money or even wait for something like the Apple Vision Pro. I think my favorite feature on these was the, uh, the virtual desktop feature. As they start to add more to that feature set, I think that would be something really, really cool for professionals that are on the go and also professionals that want to get their work done while wearing a pair of sunglasses. But as always, if you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit like and subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Glass. That was a really good example of augmented reality. Is Google Glasses, right? Or Glass? I said Glass. What's it called?